a semi-synthetic organism with an expanded genetic alphabet. That is the name of the paper announcing a new age in terms of life on this planet. They created a bacterium in incorporating chemical building blocks that, as far as anyone knows, have never been part of any earthly life form. In a development sure to have far-reaching repercussions, scientists working at a drug discovery company called Synthorx quietly announced that it is using an expanded version of the genetic alphabet, one that includes two novel base pairs dubbed X and Y, to create a type of E. coli bacteria never before seen on the face of the Earth. While the potential for the, using these new hybrid life forms to create wonder drugs is indeed enormous, that is merely the tip of the iceberg. The addition of two base pairs to the four-letter DNA code effectively raises the number of possible amino acids an organism could use to build proteins from 20 to 172. To gain an appreciation for the scope of this difference, just imagine that the entire array of life on this planet was increased eightfold. If you thought those freakish-looking deep-sea fish dredged up by ocean vessels looked alien, those are practically our brothers and sisters compared with an organism that would employ a six-letter DNA code. Expanded genetic alphabet in action. By adding a synthetic base pair, nicknamed X and Y, to DNA, the number of possible amino acids a cell can use to construct proteins increases from 20 to 172. This opens new possibilities to add multiple novel amino acids to create novel and diverse proteins for improved enzymes, drugs, diagnostics, and vaccines. As you can see before, A, T, G, and C, four nucleotides, two base pairs. The RNA does its thing, 64 codons <coughs> for 20 amino acids. Then the amino acids make your proteins. In every organism on this planet, Every, every form of life that we know of, this is what it is. Until this. Six nucleotides, three base pairs, adding X and Y, which gives you 216 codons for up to 172 amino acids, <coughs> which produce all these crazy novel proteins. A greater variety of amino acids results in novel diverse proteins. There's the before and after. And if I can just editorialize for a second here, these people are batshit crazy. They should not be doing this. All right, back to reading. So Schultz, he works at Synthorx, thinks there will be medical uses of synthetic organisms long before they are released into the environment to eat oil or make cheese. And once synthetic biology leads to a new drug or vaccine, he thinks we'll get used to the idea of inventing life for our own good. He goes on to say, one has to pick the most near-term applications of this technology to show what it can really do for the good of mankind. I think medicine is one area of pretty obvious application. Synthetic organisms could lead to other type of products, including new vaccines. It might be possible, for instance, to make a tuberculosis bacterium with unnatural DNA in it. It would be a real living germ, but without any raw material to copy its genes, that is no external source of the chemicals X and Y. You could give it to a person without worrying that it would make them sick. If it was TB, but also benign, that would be the perfect vaccine says Schultz. While the potential benefits to humanity and indeed the Earth's ecosystem are enormous, the dangers are equally staggering. On one hand, Earth is flirting with its sixth extinction event, and an expanding genetic code has the potential to greatly revitalize the store of diversity found across the globe. On the other side of the equation, these new hybrid species could have the effect that many non-native organisms often do when introduced to a new ecosystem, obliterating the indigenous life forms. A potential objection to the technology is already apparent. Nobody knows quite what these novel forms of life would do if released into the wild. Rosenberg's E. coli depend upon an external source of X and Y to stay alive. 
The church likewise argues that his GROs are safe because they depend on unnatural amino acids that are only supplied in the lab. Without these and the bacteria die. This sort of kill switch is meant to assuage anyone who wonders what happens if the bacteria escape. But it isn't foolproof. Both Rosenberg and Church reported a tiny fraction of the bacteria managed to slip the genetic handcuffs via mutation. This means that if they were released outside the lab, an artificial organism might somehow scavenge up a substitute chemical from the environment to replace the critical one fed to it in the labs. Or it might exchange genes with other organisms it runs into outside a lab dish. Such an event could allow modified germs to live and reproduce. Let me editorialize again. It might exchange genes with organisms it runs into outside a lab dish. They're talking about putting it into our medicine. It's going to run into us if they inject it into us. And there's a known... They already know that it mutates. And... and ex, ex, uh, ex, uh. Synthorx isn't the only startup looking to expand upon the life code for commercial reasons. Amberx, another San Diego company, uses unnatural amino acids in partnership with major drug companies like Eli Lilly and Merck. Isaacs and Church described how, in separate experiments, they created what they called a genomically reordered organism, or GRO. They hadn't changed the DNA letters, but they had hijacked a few codons to make them use artificial amino acids. Church and Isaacs recently announced they had formed a Boston-based company, N-Evolve, to supply such GROs for use by industry to, say, clean up oil spills or even make cheese. During a January phone conference with reporters, Church declared that, quote, We are aiming at modifying plant and animal cells, and maybe plants and animals. These people are crazy to do this. But these are billion dollar industries that they're in. Billion, like multi billion. So, who cares? <laughs> who cares if we just create novel life that's never been seen on this planet? 